people don't realize that um, you know they hired a radical group of Arab terrorists called the the Wahhabis after their religion and uh, armed them. And uh, the Americans wanted to break the back of the British monopoly on uh, the Arabian Peninsula. They wanted to get oil. So they funded the terrorist group. The terrorist group threw the legitimate rulers of Mecca and Medina out, uh, the Hashemite family. And then uh, they called themselves the House of Saud. And the first thing the Saudis did, of course, was to get rid of the radical members of the, the Muslim Brotherhood. They weren't stupid, after all. And the next thing they did was to create Aramco, the Arab American Oil Company. Uh, so it was, it was all about the money. So we funded the most bigoted, the most anti-Islamic <laughs> group of racists on the planet just so we could get uh, an oil monopoly uh, in a little tiny corner of the Arab Peninsula. Most people haven't heard of the Muslim Brotherhood. They sort of began... Uh, you know, they put the House of Saud on the throne, then they went to Egypt. The Egyptian leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, Hassan al-Banna, was a real devotee of Adolf Hitler. In heaven, Allah, on earth, Hitler. And he had an army of three-quarters of a million Arab Nazis. And uh, these guys were war criminals and terrorists. Not one of them was prosecuted. In fact, the worst of them, the, uh, the Arab Nazi ambassador to Berlin... Uh, was the uh, uh, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem? Uh, he was Hitler's favorite <laughs> Arab. Hitler personally briefed him on his plans to extend the Holocaust to the Middle East and North Africa. And Hitler's aide said, "My Führer, why would you tell all of our most you know, sensitive state secrets to this Arab?" And Hitler said, "Because they support our goals so enthusiastically." Now, the Muslim Brotherhood was never prosecuted because they were hired right away by the British Secret Service, Kim Philby again, because they wanted to use the Arab Nazi movement to crush the infant state of Israel. Well, that didn't work so well. And so when the new secular Arab government came in in Egypt, Nasser was very concerned about this huge army of Arab Nazis running around the country, complete with their original German handlers. So he, Nasser ordered them thrown out. By this time, Eisenhower had been elected, Dulles was in charge of the CIA, and he had to find a place to hide the Arab Nazis. So he asked the Saudis to take him in. The Saudis liked the Nazis anyway. Besides, most of the Egyptian Nazis were literate. The Saudis gave them jobs as school teachers. So we had a perfect storm of hatred. We had Nazi racism mixed with Islamic extremist bigotry. Uh, what the, the Saudi version of Islam is really a heresy. It's been condemned as a heresy uh, more than 60 times before World War II. Um, so we had Nazis as school teachers in Saudi Arabia. So the chief Nazi propagandist, uh, Saeed Qutub, his brother Mohammed Qutub, was the tutor of a young man named Osama bin Laden, as well as Dr. Al-Zari of uh, Egypt. So it's no surprise that uh, these guys grew up infused with Nazi ideology. Now, Dulles' idea, when he brought the Muslim Brotherhood into the U.S. in the 50s, was to use the Muslim Brotherhood as a proxy army of Arab Nazis to fight the Arab communists during the Cold War. Now, of course, it was a, a real farce, but, it, you know, we, during the 1980s, uh, Vice President Bush actually you know, took the Arab Nazis out of the closet for the last time and used them to recruit the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. Uh, but this was too much even for the Saudis. They, they wouldn't let this crazy army of second-generation Nazis back into their country, so they paid them off to stay out of Saudi Arabia and go bomb somewhere else. And they eventually did on 9-11. What the 9-11 Commission doesn't know is that the Justice Department and the State Department had withheld all the Muslim Brotherhood files from them. And there was a huge Muslim Brotherhood support network for al-Qaeda in the U.S. that helped the 9-11 bombers. To this day, America is the only Western nation that doesn't declare the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist group. Even the Arab states do that. Uh, a professor here in Florida named uh, Sami Al-Aryan, who was actually 
on the world board of a terrorist group, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, one of the splinter factions of the Muslim Brotherhood. And the FBI was trying to recruit him as an informant. So I got frantic calls from people in the FBI and CIA saying, you're going to help us. We're not, the Justice Department won't allow us to touch this guy. So what I did was I donated money to Professor Al Arian's charities and then sued him to find out where my money had gone and exposed him as a major terrorist leader in America. I'll give you another example. This, uh, this, this guy, Samuel Arian, I talked about the Muslim Brotherhood, had also set up a gigantic stolen car ring in America because you can steal a luxury car in America, ship it to Saudi Arabia, and sell it for three times its value. So uh, we actually found that the purchaser of these stolen cars was a member of the Al-Qaeda Golden Chain. That's the top financiers of Osama bin Laden. And the cars that wouldn't fetch a big price, the older ones, were made into car bombs and uh, used against American soldiers in Iraq. We found in at least two cases through the vehicle identification numbers of cars that have been stolen in America, shipped through El Arian's network here in Tampa, and were used, later used as car bombs to kill American soldiers. The investigation was quashed by the FBI. Secret Service, Customs, ICE were all coming to me saying, what the heck is going on? Here is this major investigation. Never made the light of day. Uh, Bill Warner came to me right after the Alarian case and said he had this great idea. If I gave him the names of you know, terrorist supporters of Sammy Alarian in America, terrorist suspects, he was going to send them advertisements. And Bill's advertisement was, try our international calling card free for 90 days, and we hope that you sign up with our phone service. Well, one of the idiots actually did it. And once we had his phone records, then we were able to legally go to other phone companies and purchase the calling records of the people that he called to solicit further companies, uh, customers. So in essence, we became the Muslim Brotherhood's phone company. And they didn't know it. Uh, it was absolutely remarkable. So Bill kept, you know, he remortgaged his house, took out 20000 bucks, and kept buying more and more phone records. And uh, within a year after 9-11, I had correlated those records against terrorist attacks around the world and were able to show, for example, that every time a certain guy in Los Angeles of the Muslim Brotherhood called the, a Palestinian refugee camp, in Jordan, that a terrorist attack in Israel would take place that same day. Uh, we're able to show 100% correlation against Al Qaeda operations. It was just incredible. So we turned this giant phone database over to Northern Command, part of the U.S. military responsible for protecting America. We said, you know, we think we have a map here of every terrorist logistical support cell in America. And when the military ran it through their computers, it lit up like a Christmas tree. They couldn't believe it. They knew that there were numbers overseas were terrorists. They didn't know who they were calling in America. So the military asked the FBI to come in to help them get uh, search warrants and computer taps. And uh, the FBI typically took credit for the operation. Neither Bill Warner nor I ever got the million-dollar reward for justice for, you know, tracking down terrorists. But what did happen is, as soon as the FBI found out that we had identified the Muslim Brotherhood, they all stopped using their, our phone cards.